Managing risks at work. New guidelines now require companies to manage disease outbreaks and mental health at workplaces. Well, for more on what workplace safety and health entails in this new novel, Associate Professor Audrey Chia from uh, the NUS Business School as well as the NUS uh, Yongdu Lin School of Medicine join us. Uh, her research is on health, environmental and social challenges. Uh, Prof Chia, uh, from your research, does it sound like effectively uh, this mandates the need for businesses to take care of employees' well-being? Yes, and I would hope that that has happened even without these latest guidelines, without this latest mandate, right? I believe that um, employee well-being is a great contributor to performance. And I think employers owe it to their employees to preserve their health, considering how much time, how much of our lifetime we actually spend at work. And Professor, what are some office-specific arrangements, if you like, that companies need to do more of? Mm, yeah, I think um, if we're talking about infectious diseases, uh, in Singapore, for example, we have the flu and right now we have COVID. So I think really looking into air quality would be very important. And I think as more people go back to work, uh, I would hope that most places would have uh, HEPA filters and that uh, people would continue to wear masks while actually trying to spend some time outdoors during the workday, which is good for their mental health. Uh, another thing that we should be looking at is really, you know, it, it seems a bit uh, non-intuitive, but we should be looking at non-communicable diseases. So we have seen from COVID, for example, that being obese actually um, increases the risk of becoming very ill with COVID. And it also leads to poorer health outcomes. So what that points to us is that we should not merely focus on infectious diseases. It is very important to have good general health, uh, to eat well, to get enough sleep, and to have enough work-life balance, which a lot of us have been striving to do uh, during uh, the last two years. Yeah, and I would really encourage um, offices or workplaces to keep the flex arrangements that many places have now to allow employees to ease back in and also to give employees the kind of autonomy that would contribute to their mental health, right? Um, many of us have taken up new hobbies like exercising more or, you know, spending more time outdoors. And I hope that will not go away just because more of us are returning to work. I think workplaces should support employees in their health-seeking behaviours. Um, Another thing uh, which ties... Mm -hmm. Uh, it, Another it thing which ties in very much with my work is about sitting, you know, so um, trying to get employees to sit less and move more. Yeah, sorry, Jill. That was no, no, no. Right. Thank you for, for adding that. But it, it would seem that all these, these changes uh, would require at least a degree of training uh, as well as some financial investment. Uh, do you think that some sectors could mm. find it a little bit more challenging to comply than others? Yeah, I think the idea is to start small, you know, whichever sector we are in. It reminds me of the time when uh, companies all started to try to go green, right? We all start at different levels. And yet there are some very simple things that we could all do. So take what I said just now about sitting less and moving more. That doesn't really cost a lot of money. It's just about reminding people not to sit for so long, to keep our meetings short and crisp. Right, so that is um, really, you know, doesn't cost a lot. Um, we could also do small little things like introducing plants to the workplace to improve mental health, and that doesn't cost a lot either, right? Um, I think the clear investments that have to be made will be really about creating roles that take charge of monitoring health and wellness. And the whole idea is not to burden people further by telling them, okay, you know, we're not going to measure your health and wellness, but rather to have someone in charge who could be a champion of it 
and also to look at which areas have been neglected, for example, right? So it's very easy to talk about masks and sanitizers and the physical aspects. Um, I think the mental aspects really need looking into. A lot of us are very fatigued and, um, you know, it's just about undergoing all these changes that we have undergone the last two years. So I think it'd be good for workplaces to actually have a conversation with their employees about what they would value in the new workplace, right? We always talk about, you know, in Singapore, rebuilding better. We want the world to rebuild better. So we should also mm. try to redesign and rethink our workplaces for mm. better health. Well, we, we do appreciate your thoughts uh, on this uh, very interesting topic, Associate Professor Audrey Chia there from the NUS Business School and the NUS Yong Lu Lin School of Medicine. Thank you.